Hello and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 SDK tutorial video and in today's video I'm going to be showing how you can apply your own custom aerial imagery to a certain area of the map. I'm currently at Honolulu International for this example and I'll show you why if we're just going to ready to fly and then just go to the developer camera. We can see we're on the runway and if we zoom out of the runway this doesn't look too bad here but as we go over a little bit on the runway we can see it's just kind of like this big massive green mess and this is because the map data on Bing has just got clouds over this part of the map so when the game has tried to render it it doesn't know what to do so it's just put this big mess in so if we just go and have a look at that on Bing Maps and as we can see in Bing Maps here we've just got this large cloud that goes all over the end of the runway and it's that's what's making this texture look bad but if we go and look on Google Maps we can see Google Maps is a nice clean image with no clouds so what we're going to try and do in this tutorial is take this image from Google Maps and we're going to then overlay it as the new aerial imagery in the sim so if we look in our Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK installation directory in samples there is a sample directory down here called simple aerial and that's the one that we're going to be working with so we just want to make a copy of that into wherever we're working on our local scenery files so mine are stored in my d drive in tutorial scenery so i'm just going to make a copy of simple aerial over to here and then when it's copied over we just want to go into that directory and now we've got our project xml so i'm just going to rename it to the icao code for this airport which is phnl so that'll do for that and then again inside package definitions we've got another one and I'm just going to rename that as well to PHNL. Then if we go back I'm going to edit this file and we just want to use Notepad++ or something to edit it with. And again we just want to rename this because I've just named that file something else. So again it's PHNL and save that. And then go into our package definitions and we want to edit this XML file as well. And the only thing we need to change in here is the name of the asset package so I'm just going to call it PHNL again you can probably put something a little bit more detailed in there if you want it's totally up to you so once we're done with that if we go back to our package sources and then into the CGL directory and then into aerial images these are the default images that get overlaid and somewhere in the map we don't want these so we're going to delete these and then if we go back and we just look at this CG Builder config, let's just open this in Notepad++. We can see this doesn't need editing, it just tells us the directory where we're going to store our aerial images. So what we need to do now is come up with a way of getting the high res data out of Google Maps and so we can use it to put into here. So I'm going to be using a number of third party tools to do this. I'll put the links in the description down below. It's a little bit convoluted so it's not for the faint hearted but it is pretty straightforward to do when you know what you're doing. There is a tool called Ortho for XP that will allow you to pull out map data but I'm not going to be using that because I've noticed some of the map data that is included in there isn't very good either it's still got clouds on so i'm actually going to be using google maps and to do that i'm going to be using google earth pro now google earth pro is free but you do want to be using this rather than google maps or the web browser version because you can get the best export imagery out of this so all i need to do is go and find hawaii and then once we're at hawaii we can see the airport down here and we can see that this map data the same as on google maps doesn't have any cloud info so this is the bit that we want to actually try and capture so what you want to do is you'll notice as well the more you zoom in the better the quality of the photo so if you were to zoom out here you're going to have a low res image which isn't really what we want to do we want a pretty high res image so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take multiple shots of this zoomed in and then I'm going to stitch it together using another bit of software which I'll put the link down below and we don't want to have any labels or anything turned on so we want to make sure everything's turned off in here and you can notice there's a bit of an angle here because it's not looking straight down to look straight down in Google Earth if you just press the R key it will completely zoom straight down on it and basically now what I want to do is just capture images of this all the way along to get all the, the relevant bits that I need to stitch it together so to capture an image in Google Earth you just go to file save save image and then when this pops up you get these map options and I'm just going to turn all these off I don't want any map options on and then I'm going to set the scaling to 1% so it's the best possible scaling it can be and the resolution I'm going to set to maximum so it does it in the highest resolution it can possibly save and now all I want to do is click save image and then save this image somewhere to my local directory so in my simple aerial directory I'm just going to create a new folder that I can put my raw files in so let's just call it raw 
and in here I'm going to create another new folder that I can store my Google images in so I'm just going to call this Google images and now I just need to save this JPEG with a decent name so I'm just going to call it map tile one and click save and then once that's saved I'm going to move over a little bit more just noticing points of reference of what I want to keep in the image for the next one for the stitching so if we move to about there and then do the same again save image and this can just be map tile 2 and again noticing points of reference now I'm going to move it across some more about there and take another image and that can be map tile 3 and then moving across some more again keeping points of reference and this should be the final one that we need and I'm going to call this map tile 4 so now if we go back to our directory and look in that raw directory and then in Google Images, you can see we've got four high resolution captures of this map. So what we want to do now is actually stitch this together so it's one big image. So to do the stitching, I'm using Image Composite Editor by Microsoft. This is a free tool that I'll put the link in the description and it will enable us to just give it images and it will figure out the best way of stitching them together. So what we want to do is a new panorama from images. So click that. And then that'll pop up an open dialog and all we want to do is go into our raw directory google images and select all of the images that we've captured and click open and then all we want to do is keep it on simple panorama and click next then it will stitch them together for us and you can see here once the stitching is complete it's taken those four images and it's laid them all out as one big image which is fine and what we want and then next again and for our file format we're going to change that to png and we're going to include an alpha channel and then we just want to click export to disk and then let's save this stitched image somewhere i'm just going to put it in the raw directory and I'm going to leave it called map tile I'll just take the one out map tile stitch and click save and now we have our stitched image what we want to do though is tidy that up a bit so we're going to need some sort of photo editing tool I'm going to be using Photoshop but you can use other things like the GIMP or fireworks or any other photo editing tool so we've got the file opened in Photoshop now and we're going to want to edit it a little bit because we've got these hard edges on it so we're going to just feather the edges out a little bit so it blends in a little bit nicer and we're also going to do a little bit of color correction because we can see that this is more vibrant than the existing Bing maps so to feather the edges I'm just going to go around with the eraser tool set on um, a very low hardness just so we've got a bit of a feather to it and there are other ways of feathering an image again these aren't photoshop tutorials that i'm doing i'm just doing it the way that i know so if you've got another way of doing it then do it whichever way works best for you and now what we're going to want to do is kind of color correct this to match the bing maps a bit more so i'm just going to take a screen grab of the bing map and i'm just going to bring it in here as a layer and now this doesn't have to be a high resolution quality because we're not going to be keeping this we're just using it for the color matching purposes and I just want to be able to see both side by side so I'm just going to double the canvas size so I can have these sitting on top of each other okay so now what we're going to do with our Google Maps image selected is we're going to just keep messing with the colors until we've got it color corrected to match this a little bit more so I'm just going to mess around with this and see what comes out the best result at the end okay so here we go I've just removed a bit of the vibrant from the image and I've lightened it a bit and I've desaturated a little bit and it looks near enough for the purposes of this tutorial it should be fine you can spend as long as you want on getting these images as good as you want so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that lower image the reference image of Bing Maps as I no longer need it and then I'm going to set the canvas size back down to what it needed to be before and now we have an image of the airport runway that doesn't have the clouds on and we're ready to start cutting this up into the tile format that's needed by Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're just going to save this out back as a PNG and keep the transparency because we'll need that. So now we've got our complete image we need to cut those up so Microsoft Flight Simulator can use them in the tile format that it uses and to do this we're going to use another tool called QGIS again I'll put the link down in the description to this tool it's also free and with QGIS open what we're going to want to do is go down to XYZ tiles and right click on that then click new connection and this will open up the connection wizard that will enable us to put in a reference map that we want to be using so we're going to be using the Bing maps here so I'm just going to type Bing in this can be anything you want and then you need the URL for Bing maps again I'll put this URL in the description but the URL is this and then all we need to do is click OK 
Then when we expand this, we can see we've got Bing map. We've also got open street map. We don't need open street map, so we can delete that if you want. So just click delete on that and then say yes. And then on Bing, if we right click on that and do add layer to project, we should now see our map that is pulled in from Bing and we can zoom in on that and we can see that we've got Hawaii over here. So we want to zoom into the airport that we've been working on. So now we've zoomed in, what we basically want to do is load in our custom Google image that we created and we're going to geo-reference it to match this map. So to do that we want to go to the geo-referencer which if we go up here and go to raster menu and then geo-referencer. This brings up the geo-referencer window we want to open a new raster that we can geo-reference. So if we click on this checkerboard icon up here where it says open raster and then if we browse to our stitched file that we created so mine was in raw and then it was map tile stitch so we select that and click open now when our image opens what we need to do now is start setting reference points on here that match the actual bing map so it knows where to locate things so to do this if we just zoom into where we could set reference points so I'm going to use the end of the runway for a reference point and the more reference points the better it's going to match and then to set a reference point just make sure you've got this add point selected and then you go down to where you want that reference point to be set so I'm just going to do it right in the bottom here and I'm going to click with the left mouse button and it pops up and says you need to enter the map coordinates for where this reference point is and actually what I want to do is get the reference point from our actual Bing map. So I'm going to click from map canvas and then on our map I'm going to zoom into that same location and I'm just going to put it there and then click OK. And now we want to keep adding reference points up until we're happy that it's going to locate it correctly. So I'm just going to add another one here and again from map canvas and then I'm going to put it about there and click OK. And I'm just going to keep adding these in until I'm happy that I've got all the reference points. And when you think you've got enough ready, we can go and try and geo-reference this. All we need to do is click the green arrow. This will then pop up and it will say, please set transformation type. Just click OK. And then in here, you need to set the transformation type to thin plate spline, the resampling method, nearest neighbor. Target SRS needs to be set to project CRS pseudo Mercator. So the second one down. And we need to set where we're going to save it to. I'm just going to save it to the same directory that we had the original stitched one. And we shouldn't need to change any of the other settings, so compression, none, everything unticked there. And the last thing that's ticked is loading QGIS when done. And then all we need to do is hit OK. And this won't actually do anything now because we've just set the settings. So again, we need to start the georeferencing. So we're just going to click the play button again, and that will start georeferencing for us. And when the georeferencing is finished, we can close down our georeferencer windows. We no longer need this. We can save the points if we want. It's always a good idea to save these points because if your map hasn't aligned perfectly, you need to come back in and add more points. So I'd always recommend saving your points just in case you need to edit this in the future. And then you can see now that on our map, we can see that the original Bing map, which has still got this cloud in, now has our Google map over the top and it's pretty well blended. We can see there are some areas down by the road here that it needs a little bit of work doing to it to get it to blend a little bit better. So you can do that in the photo editor tool just to make sure all these things line up accordingly. But that's looking pretty good. It's certainly looking much better than what was there before. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to cut this up into the way that Microsoft Flight Sim uses tiles. And the way Microsoft Flight Sim uses them is each file name for the square of the map has to be in what's called a quad key or quad tile file name which is basically just a bunch of numbers that determines the coordinates of where that's going to be in its quad key location and there's no simple way of getting this information you can convert from longitude and latitude to it etc and it's all a bit of a faff but we're going to use some tools to make it nice and easy for us to do so the next thing we want to do is we want to actually cut this out into all the relevant individual tiles the first thing we want to do is turn off our background map because we're not interested in the background map for this export so we're just going to untick bing down here so we just see our map and then we want to bring up the processing toolbox if you don't have it so just go to view down to panels and then you should see processing toolbox and make sure that's ticked and this will appear over on the right hand side. So now what we want to do is use the raster tools. So if we expand where it says raster tools and then we want to go to generate XYZ tiles directory and double click that. Then in extent we want to set it to our map that we've got down here selected. So calculate from layer and then mine was map tiles stitch one modified. 
set our minimum zoom to 19 and our maximum zoom to 19 and then if we scroll down make sure tile format is set to PNG we don't need to worry about quality and we want to set an output directory so to do that just click here and click save to directory and I've created a folder inside raw called output tiles which I'm going to use so just click select folder that sets there then we just select run to run this process and when that's complete, if we look in our output tiles directory, we can see we've got a folder here. And if we look in there, there's lots of other folders. And if we look in one of these, we can see some of these are black. And then some of them are actually the image tiles for our cutout map in the background. And that'll all be fine for now. So what we need to do now is turn these tiles into something that can be used by Microsoft Flight Simulator. And for that, we're going to use another tool called Tiles to Bing, which I'll put the link in the description down below again. And to use Tiles to Bing, you need to get the zip file, extract it somewhere somewhere on your desktop and then open up a command prompt. So to open up the command prompt, you can just press your Windows key or click the Windows icon in the left hand corner and then type CMD or you can press the Windows key and R to bring up the run command and type CMD. That will then bring up your command prompt window and in the command prompt window we basically want to then navigate to the directory where we've exported tiles to Bing to. And then to run tiles to Bing all we need to do is type tiles to Bing and then we need to put the path of the directory of where our source files are. So ours are in output tiles. So I'm just going to copy this using control C. And then in here, make sure you always put the directories in quotation marks. So quote, and then I'm going to press shift and insert to paste. And then another quote. And then we need to define the output directory where we're going to output these files to. So slash O for output and then another quotation mark and what we're going to do is we're going to output them into our package sources CGL aerial images so again I'm going to copy that directory and then back in here shift insert to paste and then close the quote and then forward slash Y and then the word Google then just press enter to run that process and now we can see what's happened there is it's converted all of those individual images that we had in our output tiles into our aerial images and each file name now is the quad key file name that is required by Bing Maps which is required by Microsoft Flight Simulator and we can see it's created all these individually for us. Now all we need to do is open up Flight Simulator and have a look at seeing these in the game. So when Flight Sim's loaded up what I've noticed is if you go into the map and then try and open an aerial image it doesn't seem to load. So I always find it better to open the project before you go into your map. So I'm just going to go to tools project editor and then project open and then within the simple area project I'm just going to open the PHNL project and then when that's open I'm going to click it and I'm just going to click build package and when the package is built we just close the console window down and then if we just go to world map and let's go and find the airport that we just edited and we'll go to this runway that we fixed and then we'll just click fly and now when our game is running we can see that we're actually now getting the Google map that we put in custom and if we scroll along we can see that we're no longer getting that big cloud over it. You can see here the road isn't merging perfectly well and you'd probably want to actually bring this road all the way up to fix it all the way to the top. But that's the process of how you bring in your own custom aerial imagery. As I said there are different ways of generating your imagery but once you've got it generated you need to bring it into those special quad key named tile maps and then it will just overlay over the existing Bing maps in the game. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please consider subscribing to the channel, leaving any likes, dislikes, hit the notification bell and leave any comments down below and I'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.